And now please welcome to the stage United States Congressman Warren Davidson from Ohio's 8th District. Thanks so much for, uh, for coming here. And I want to thank uh, Bernie and really the city of Cleveland for putting this together. Looking at uh, block land uh, here, uh, it's a great win for Ohio, but it's a really a great win for the entire industry. And I'm really excited to see uh, where this uh, fundamental technology can go. I really believe it is the early days. Uh, it has the power to be as transformative as the internet was, and in many ways, have the same sort of far-reaching impacts. You'll have early adopters, uh, and people won't get it. That's kind of where we're at today. Uh, and then it'll be like, how could we live without this? Um, how would we go back to the old, more cumbersome way of uh, processing all sorts of things? Some of those things uh, will not involve financial transactions. They'll just be recording. And some of those things will truly be financial. So uh, I am working in Congress uh, on, so I've been in Congress since summer of 2016. So it's been pretty interesting to two and a half years in American politics. And uh, my predecessor was former Speaker John Boehner. Prior to that, I was in manufacturing. And prior to that, I was in the Army. And so um, along the way, what I didn't really realize is some of the things I had gone through in the private sector as a business person uh, were equipping me to do this financial services work. And when I got into the Financial Services Committee, I looked around at things that might actually need Congress to do something. Because a lot of things, people want Congress to just leave them alone, right? And, and so when I looked at uh, blockchain, and I saw the announcements that were coming out where, uh, that alarmed some people. When you, know, you hear the regulator at the Securities and Exchange Commission say that the, everything looks like a security, and you're trying to launch something that isn't a security, um, that's alarming. And as I started to meet with people in the space, whether they were in um, you know, the standard early stage companies, Austin, Boston, and uh, Silicon Valley, then you come back to Ohio and see you know, where the, where, what's going on here in our home state. Uh, people were expressing their concern that they were going to need to move somewhere else. Uh, I, had, I had someone in Boston say, look, uh, no offense, we just don't trust you. So we're putting our capital in Singapore. We're putting our capital in Switzerland. So there's a need for us to act. You look at, the, you look at uh, the court decisions and the patchwork that's coming out. Do you want to trust the courts to create a coherent framework? And so then I stepped back and looked at the situation and part of the sense of awe of serving in Congress. And so many issues come to the fruition the, through um, the right approach. And in, in the United States of America, uh, with respect to folks that are visiting here or aren't from here, uh, we really are blessed to be the world's land of opportunity. We're the greatest destination for goods, services, capital, intellectual property, and therefore people. People always want to come here. And it's not because well, we have no laws. Somalia is trying to pull that off. Uh, the anarcho-capitalists can try that. Um, but it's not that we have these heavy burden, incoherent laws where there's so much regulation the market can't thrive. It's the right mix. And so in, in this situation, we're dealing with a lack of certainty. And do we want a regulator that's not necessarily accountable, that everything looks like a security, to define it all as a security? It'll kill the market, in my opinion. It'll kill the market in the United States of America. Or do we want a patchwork of court decisions that we hope somehow is miraculously going to create a coherent framework. I don't think we should hope for that. I don't think we should hope. I think we should know. <clears throat> and so toward that end, we set out to create a, a framework for a third asset class. And historically, there are um, you know, equity. That would be an initial public offering. You, you, if you go to the balance sheet of the firm, when you issue the equity, um, you've got an equity line on one side and cash on the other. The balance sheet's in balance. When you take on debt, you've got a liability and you've got cash. The debt has uh, liabilities for future repayment. But when you tokenize something, are you selling a security or are you selling a debt, a, a promise to deliver future goods or services? And right now, 
uh, there's a blend. There are a lot of people, to be sure, that have used this early stage maybe through complete ignorance of securities laws and sometimes through outright fraud, who have launched, basically used regulatory arbitrage to drop a white paper uh, that if it were called a, an initial public offering would have all sorts of rules and uh, there's been some regulatory arbitrage. They're essentially just launching a security, generally non-voting shares to a company. But I believe there's this other asset that is neither uh, debt nor equity that's a distributed sort of debt. It's a promise, it's a token, and you should be able to tokenize that. And what this does for entrepreneurs is it gives people uh, the ability to um, raise capital in a different way uh, than what they've done. They can stay in control of their company. And I want to explain it briefly. And this is where our bill that we're dropping. It's a bipartisan bill. And if you hadn't heard about this, in September we had a conference in DC, a roundtable. Some of you were there. And we brought, we, the goal was to have about 30 people come. And uh, as we started getting more people, more people, C-level people now, you go from the CEO of Ripple to where the general counsel for NASDAQ wants to be there, the institutional investors for uh, State Street, Fidelity, you name it, everyone wanted to be there. To the point where Ron Hammond, who's the guy on our staff that's uh, doing the heavy lifting on this, was getting calls 11 o'clock at night. I gotta get into this round table. Uh, it, it's been well received and this is the bill that's coming out. So where in the spectrum are we gonna go? We're gonna take a bite-sized chunk because um, if, if you go back to uh, Seven Habits, you'll say, begin with the end in mind. And the end is, you've got a token that can be exchanged that is not a security. Uh, Bill Hinman uh, of the SEC made a speech, uh, and he basically communicated that there was regulatory uh, situation for Bitcoin and Ethereum that they no longer consider securities. Uh, what he made, the point was, is they may have been securities when they were launched. Uh, but at least right now, they don't see them as securities. Our view is there are other things that meet that criteria, and this bill wants to give legislative certainty to that fact. If, if this product meets these conditions, then it's not a security. And that means that the SEC won't have jurisdiction over it, unless you're committing fraud and saying it looks like this, but in fact it's not, it's just a security. So that's the same as every other product. Uh, we're trying to deal with the implications of that in terms of a tax sense, and when we can do this, we can actually do more things than Singapore or Switzerland. So this is a, a first step. To me, it's not incredibly inspiring because it doesn't connect the whole piece. But it is huge in terms of what it will do for the market in the United States of America. Uh, it will put us ahead of Singapore, ahead of, of Switzerland, ahead of what the Lon London is trying to do. And we want to see this capital flourish here because it completes the picture. Uh, of, of being the best home for good services, capital, intellectual property, and people. And this new way to do business uh, can thrive here because of the synergies that come from being part of the United States of America. And where do we want to go next? We want to go to create that certainty if at the concept stage you have this idea, whether you're an existing company or you're uh, a startup, that you can tokenize this asset and trade it the way that the end state is. So what's the path to get there? That's the next bill or series of bills. And, and to explain it very basically, if, um, you know, most people know what iCloud is. And some people in this room certainly know uh, what Filecoin uh, is. And for, when Filecoin launched, um, Protocol Labs launched it as a security. But let's say they chose to do it in this third asset class. Um, they've got their company, and I will use Apple for a comparison. Because if Apple chose to raise the capital to launch CloudCoin, and let's say CloudCoin was gonna do the exact same thing as Filecoin. I mean, it doesn't, but in this analogy, CloudCoin uh, was raised to do the exact same thing that Filecoin is supposed to do. It would be obvious to most everyone you're not buying control of Apple by buying a CloudCoin. You're buying a terabyte of storage or some unit uh, of access. Of, when the network's complete. And at launch, I would submit that the average consumer, institutional or retail, would pay more for the cloud coin because of the brand behind Apple, the going concern, all these things, uh, than they would pay for the file coin. But as the 
project moved closer to completion and they were demonstrating capability, if there was a market for these and they were being traded, um, the delta between the two would close. And when they were fully functional, for people, it, it's close to a commodity on storage. I mean, I know with all due respect to the storage folks, there's company differentiations and everything else, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to average that out, say they all do the exact same thing, Cloudcoin, Filecoin. We want that market to exist and flourish and for early stage companies like Filecoin to do what, in my scenario, Apple could have done with Cloudcoin. Uh, we don't have the legislative certainty to do that. It is really a joy to work in the financial services community and to do it in Congress. Uh, I will say the biggest downside is I'm not currently invested in any of this stuff, which would be highly inappropriate because I'm regulating it. Uh, and, and that was one of the questions on CNBC. Um, we will drop this bill soon. It will be bipartisan uh, because the way Congress works, it'll have to be resubmitted after the first of the year. Um, and in that time, my hope is when we drop this text, it'll become public um, and we'll share it on our websites and uh, social media, uh, on Twitter, at Warren Davidson. Um, <clears throat> please give us your feedback and comments because uh, I'm confident we can make it better. Uh, it's been very collaborative up to now. We've had lots of input. We did at September's event call for papers and we were pretty overwhelmed with the amount of input we received from across the industry. Uh, so I, I hope you find it helpful to what you're trying to do. I hope it helps advance uh, capital formation in the United States of America. And uh, any way we can do that together, uh, this has truly been one of the joys there because it's not seen as a partisan topic uh, and, uh, and we're just really here to solve problems and change laws. So thank you, God bless you, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Congressman Davidson.